Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Now, it's a beautiful sunny day out there, which means it's a perfect day for me to be inside making a Photoshop video. But I'm really excited because in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to determine absolute fluorescence uh, based on a standard curve. So what I mean by that is, you can see here I've got a 96-well plate, and in my first two rows, I've taken... Uh, fluorescence standard of a known concentration and just done like a one and two dilution series here. And then in my four rows here, I guess I've taken my sample in quadruplicate, quadruplicate, I don't know, four of each sample. I'm not sure exactly what it was because I did this a long time ago. But uh, this should work just fine for you for whatever you're doing. Just make sure you keep track of what your standard concentrations are. So uh, what we're going to be doing here is using the measurement log and measuring integrated density, which I actually went through in one of my other videos. I think it was uh, measuring band intensity in a western blot or something like that. But I should mention that for this technique, you'll need uh, either Photoshop CC um, or Photoshop Extended. I don't think the uh, measurement function is in earlier versions of Photoshop or non-extended versions. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's get to it. So the first thing I want to do is measure some of these blank wells uh, just to get a background reading. And I'm going to use the marquee tool circle, but first I want to measure the size of these wells so I can know how big my circle should be. So I'm going to choose the ruler tool uh, underneath the eyedropper. So you just click and hold and get the eyedropper there. And then I'm going to zoom in a bit. Yeah, that looks good. And then just kind of drag from one side to the other. And you can see up in the... Uh, options, or whatever this bar is up here, uh, we have a height of approximately 37 pixels. So that's going to be the diameter of my little well here. So I'll clear that, go to my uh, circle marquee, which if you don't see, you just click and hold, and it's underneath the rectangle, rectangular marquee. And I've already done it here, but uh, if you want to follow along, for style, we're going to, it's probably normal by default, but we're going to go fix size. And we're going to go 37 pixels by 37 pixels, which is what we just measured. And so now what we need to do is just sort of click, and we'll get this uh, fixed size marquee circle here. And then I'm just going to take a few measurements over um, these blank wells. And what I'm going to do is hold shift and move them around. So I'm just clicking and dragging until I'm kind of happy with the position. Uh, I don't know, we'll pick a couple, maybe one over here. Again, just holding shift, kind of bringing it over each of the wells. I don't know, let's do this guy up here too. And maybe let's do one more just for good measure. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. So what we want to do now is go to the window and select measurement log, which you'll see here. And I probably already selected it, but if you haven't, you're going to want to go to set measurement scale and go to, oh no, sorry, not measurement scale. We want to go to set, select data points and choose custom. And label is fine, uh, but what we're really interested in is integrated density. And so just make sure that that is checked. And in case you didn't watch the video, what integrated density basically does is it takes all of the pixels within your selection and adds them up. So they're absolute values. So if you remember, uh, black pixels are basically given a value of 0 and white pixels are given a value of 255 so it's just and gray is everything in between so it's just adding up those 0 to 255 so in other words things that are whiter are gonna have higher values than things that are blacker uh, which is exactly what we're looking for in this case so I'm gonna say okay and then uh, all we need to do is just hit record measurements and so you can see here are my integrated density values. So measurement one here is actually just the sum total of all of them, but my feature one, two, three, four, five are my five individual blanks. Now, if you really wanted to uh, do yourself a favor, what you could do here, and I've actually done it here already, is go and say select and say save selection. Let's call the selection blanks. And this way, it's gonna get saved off in your channels tab here. And why not? I mean, it's good to know, good to save in case you ever want to come back and check the blank wells that you did. Uh, it's just one of those things that it's good to record and if you ever need it, or what should I say, it's better to, to have and not need than to need and not have. Okay, so I'm going to deselect by hitting Control D and now it's just a matter of doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do my standards here. Uh, so again, I'm just going to click and kind of try to position it over the bright circle. I'm going to hold shift again here 
and do this guy, and then I'll do this guy, and then this guy, and then this one. And instead of doing both rows at the same time, I'm just going to do one row at a time here uh, to keep things a little organized. So I'll hit record measurements again. Then I'll do the exact same thing here. Uh, what I should do is hit control D to deselect. Oh, and I could have, just for the record, uh, saved that selection too. I already did before, but if you want to go ahead and save it off with the whole save selection thing again, uh, usually not a bad idea. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this row, the second row here. And I'm actually holding shift kind of redundantly because I've actually already got it uh, up here, add to selection. So just for the sake of showing you, I'll set this to do selection and hold shift just to show you that it can be done. And I'm just going through again, measuring these guys. Ah, there we go. And lastly here, oh god. Oh, okay. Whew. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, measurement three, great. So one thing I've noticed uh, when doing this is that Photoshop seems to record the measurements in no particular order. So you can see the values are kind of not necessarily from low to high or even from left to right or right to left. So that's not a huge problem because we can just sort these later. Um, but what I would say is when you're doing your uh, samples that usually just, or I, I find is you're probably better off to do them one at a time because um, then they won't get messed up. So you know that when I hit record measurements here, measurement four is going to be this guy. I mean, I guess we could technically, if, you, if they're in uh, four plicket, uh, we could do all four at the same time. I'll just do some uh, by themselves for now. So kind of just going through. Um, it's a little tedious, so one of the things that I have done for this before is to set up a keyboard shor shortcut for record measurements. So if you wanted to do that, you could uh, go edit, and then go down to keyboard shortcuts. And if we look, uh, where is it? Panel, no, it's under image. Analysis, record measurements. Okay, there we go. And so I've created a shortcut of Control alt d and I'll just cancel out of that. I said I'll just cancel out of that. So it does make things go slightly faster because you can just kind of click and then do your shortcut, etc., etc. Anyways, I'll probably edit out while I go through the rest of these because it's probably not going to be super exciting for you. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and measured all of your individual samples here, and I think actually I forgot to do the last row, but whatever, who needs it? Uh, we want to go ahead and export all of these measurements. So to do that, uh, you want to select them all. So right here I've just selected my bottom one. Let's go up to the top and shift click and uh, to select them all. We'll click on this little flyout menu here and we'll say ch -ch 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 -ch, export selected. And I'm going to uh, send it to the desktop. So uh, tab delimited is fine. I'll call this Photoshop output and hit enter. And that's really all we need to do in Photoshop. So we're done here. Um, I'm going to save this. Why not? And so now, if you give me a second, I will uh, hop over to uh, maybe I will use Google Spreadsheets today. Give me one second. Okay, so now once we are into our spreadsheet here, all we need to do is go to File, Import, and uh, let's see. I want to go to Upload, and then select File from a Computer. Photoshop Output looks good. Okay, great. Uh, probably these are all okay, so I'm just going to say import. And you can see through the magic of computing, uh, we have imported our measurements from Photoshop. So now it's just a matter of going through and doing all your calculations. A um, couple things to note. First thing, probably, well, these, if you remember correctly, our uh, measurement one values here are, are blank. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Maybe we'll just want to take an average of this for now. 
Mm. And we'll come back to that and subtract it out from our standards and our so here's our first row of standards and our second row of standards and then each individual one of these is our samples. So to spare you having to watch me go through and do all these calculations, I've actually gone and done one before just to show. So as I said, it was a one and two dilution series and I can't remember the exact values, so I just did a exponential two up here. But in your concentration, this would be your x-axis and this is where you would put your actual concentration from your known standard. And then you would put your integrated densi densities here of your, the sort of that first row of your 96 well plate and the second row of your 96 well plate. Um, taking the average, and then I'm subtracting out the blank, uh, which I've taken the average of the blank here. And then you can see it makes a pretty nice standard curve line. And then from there, you're just going to be doing your regular old standard curve calculations. So you want to calculate the slope and the intercept of this uh, linear relation here. And then from there, you can use those numbers to calculate the um, absolute concentration of your sample. So I can do one as an example here. So I'm going to uh, actually just subtract out the blank from this guy here. So oops. So I'll say this guy minus uh, my average blank value. Okay, and I'll just leave that there for a second. And so if I were to want to, if I want to calculate the absolute concentration, which is just going to come somewhere in this fake two dilution series that I've done here, one and two dilution series. But uh, let's see here. So it would be equals this value, the integrated density, minus the intercept over here. And actually, let's slap some brackets around those guys. And then we're going to divide it by the slope. And I'll hit enter. And you can see it's uh, 0.77, so actually pretty low concentration somewhere down around here. And actually, which is not great, because you don't want to have your samples uh, not on your standard curve. Typically, you'd want to make sure that your standard curve uh, all of your known values should encompass, hopefully, your your sample values. But that's just uh, the type of scientist I am, I guess. Anyways, I did this a long time ago, so bear with me, or at least go easy on me. Anyways, hopefully that's enough to give you kind of the basic idea. The main point in Photoshop that I wanted to cover was taking those integrated density measurements. And I think probably once you get those measurements, you are smart enough to uh, go ahead and make your own standard curve in Google Docs or Excel or whatever spreadsheet program you fancy. Um, so for now, I think that does it for this video. Uh, and I will sign off. Oh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Um, feel free to subscribe. I know my videos have been a little slower lately, but uh, you know I'm doing my best here. But in the meantime, uh, I will sign off as always by saying you worked hard to get that data of yours. So uh, why not work a little harder? Get it into Photoshop, do some measurements, and uh, and then you'll then you'll be good, I guess. <sighs> All right, well that does it for today. Catch you later, guys.